A night at Fioritos, an opening night in fact, in St. Paul, Minnesota on Smith Park. Bob Protzman of the St. Paul Dispatch Pioneer Press is disappearing into the night. And uh, to my left is Art Resnick and just across from me is Bob Rockwell and here's Ken Mason. And How do the musicians feel? How's opening night here for you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's got its exciting moments. I, I feel like the uh, the band is being turned on by the intensity of the audience and so forth. Uh, there's there's a lot of excitement in the air, and that's probably partially that opening night excitement. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying playing enormously. The programming <laughs> is certainly uh, a keynote and, and the very foundation of uh, your medium of expression. And whether it be a concert hall like the Guthrie Theater or Fioritos, uh, there is the problem of communication with the audience. Yeah. And I'm certain that you're searching for something here at Fioritos, too, in contrast to, say, a night at the Guthrie. Well, actually, Lee, what, what we're interested in doing is presenting uh, a concert format, regardless of what room we play to. Uh, we need to get the, uh, the people drawn into the music so it's not strictly a background sort of thing as if as if our back as if our music could be background as, as intense as it is but uh, the main thing I notice here is a lot of new faces a lot of people who uh, I perceive uh, are new to this kind of music uh, they're getting I can see that you know they're going with the music and at the same time a lot of times uh, they're they're maybe going off in another direction a little bit you know uh, the main thing is that, as I say, we're used to a, a concert situation by and large. As you know, there hasn't been much club jazz until very recently around town. Is there a difference so, in the dynamics of presentation under these conditions? Well, for one thing, people uh, that go to concerts don't go there to drink or to socialize. They go strictly to hear the music as a, as a first and foremost thing. Now, uh, they come ready to be ab totally absorbed, so there isn't the... Uh, it's more the responsibility of the band in a club situation to try to grab the audience who may be there for many different reasons besides just listening to the music. Uh, you know, a place to go, they like the decor, they like the uh, vibrations, you know, all that it's sort of thing. a social outlet. Yeah, right. right. Yes. Um, Bob Rockwell and Ken. Yes, one, one more thing I'd like to put to you. I understand that, that you had planned, at least earlier, to work out some new things in your repertoire, you know, just for this type of situation, um, being in a club, and also uh, I think that you may have anticipated a lot of uh, people coming down that were familiar with the music that you've been playing recently, and, and uh, because of that, perhaps you prepared some new things. Have you, or, or, or is your music going to change any now because you're in a club situation? Uh, well, the music doesn't change because of a club situation, but the music is constantly changing. Uh, Bob and I do the writing for the group and we're always coming up with new ideas. We've, we've added several tunes uh, that were some of which we've performed so far tonight and others that uh, we will perform. Uh, basically uh, we're not consciously trying to change the music to suit a club we're just evolving and the evolution involves uh, Bob and I both uh, I should say are eclectic musicians, eclectic writers and we enjoy many different bags. We're not in uh, necessarily a a singular direction, although every everything we do has, you know, the flavor, of course, of our style. But uh, so some of the pieces we've added uh, are very suitable for the club atmosphere, and yet weren't conceived because of club music, you know, because we were thinking about playing clubs. Ken. Please define the eclectic musician. Well, we uh, we we don't deny the fact that our roots come from different sources. And that, uh, and, and we're not trying to hide the fact that we learn from other people, and uh, it's sort of, uh, I don't know, how would you explain it? A grab bag? Bob Rockwell? Uh, uh, some of our music is uh, highly structured, and some of our music is uh, completely free, and I think that's, uh, in other words, some of it comes from bebop, and some of it comes from rhythm and blues, and which is a background that Art and I have both shared uh, very prominently, and, and, uh, and uh, it's just everything all of our life experience musically and otherwise. Another thought concerning programming, since your music is a rather intensive experience, how do you feel about intermissions? Should there be music in the intermissions or should there be conversations to sort of just let the audience have a release 
Uh, do you have a feeling that the audience goes into what you call auditory overload? I agree. I agree. Sort of like future shock. Yeah, uh, I'm noticing, I think especially uh, in this particular club, I would prefer to have no music during the intermission. I think it, um, it gives the audience a chance to talk, and this is a very social kind of place here, too. It's a very comfortable to play in, and I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Well, that's uh, just a brief picture of what's happening on some exceptional midweek nights here at Fioritos, which is Smith Park and the beautiful old part of St. Paul part of the tradition and on the edge of the Crocus Hill Gang and reminders and memories perhaps of uh, Scott Fitzgerald with a very contemporary kind of reference point Art Resnick overlay with Bob Rockwell so there you have the mixture whether it be Gatsby or contemporary it's under an environmental condition that smacks of the 20s and swings with the 70s <laughs> Lay it down.